I talked a lot about technology, about the stuff, the plastic, and the parts. Now I want to talk about culture. Because really, this project isn't about laptops. In fact, in 2008, I left the company, One Laptop a Child That Makes the Laptops, because I thought they were too fixated on the hardware and not fixated on the problem, which is learning. The hardware is just a vehicle for learning. And I started a, 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 another foundation called Sugar Labs that's just focused on the software and the learning. And I'm agnostic. I'm not, I'm not completely agnostic about the hardware because one of the things that, that I'm just sort of one of these people that doesn't like waste. I don't like people wasting. Waste is abhorrent to me. And when I see the kinds of things that are out in the world, they, 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 they make me a little bit queasy in my stomach. I feel that, that's just wrong. So I'm not agnostic about hardware, but I'm realistic about it. I'm realistic about the fact that people are going to, you know, this big multinational company is going to put money in that government official's pocket, and the solution is to be that device. And that's, I just live with that. No matter what computer the child has access to, I want them to have a great learning experience. And so the software is actually what the kids are working with, not the hardware. And so we designed the software to run on any computer. And the software is really the thing that interfaces to the culture, not the hardware. Again, a lot of times we're asked why are you worrying about hardware, software, when kids need clean water, they need food, they need shelter. Yeah, they do. They need those things. And I'm, I'm trying to work on the part of the problem that I can work on, and that is learning. I'm not trying to give them laptops, I'm trying to give them learning. And I think that any problem, the solution to any problem ultimately has learning at its basis. So what I'm really trying to do is not solve the world's problems. What I'm really trying to do is give the next generation the tools where they can become the problem solvers. Because the next generation has inherited from us a lot of problems, a lot of mess. And we're not solving problems for them, but we can give them tools so they can be problem solvers. And, and they, need, they need it. They need it badly. I mean, you look at, well, I, I won't get political on it. So, another, you guys are all in management, so you know all about motivation. And so I don't, this, this, I don't need to go through this uh, with you, but um, you know, it, it, it's got nothing, the motivation's got nothing to do with carrots and sticks. Motivation has got to do with um, achieving a sense of autonomy, achieving mastery, and, and finally having a sense of purpose in what you're doing. If you have these three things, you're motivated, regardless of the carrots and the sticks. And our very first pilot in, in Abuja, Nigeria, the teacher was in front of a class with a stick. And if you don't have your eyes forward, snap. It's all eyes forward. All eyes on the teacher. You guys better be looking this way or snap. One week, the teacher throws a stick out the window. Didn't need the stick because he had these other three things. We can motivate learning. But when we motivate learning, we're, we're really turning school on its head. And in fact, in a lot of places, we, we've sort of given up on turning school on its head because school is so bureaucratic and so structured that we just don't feel like there's anything we can do. So we turn everything that's not school on its head instead. So we do a lot with after-school programs and, and, and the like. So, in fact, I mean, one of the problems is that ministers of education think their job ends at the door of the school. They think their job ends when they built the, the bricks and mortar and, and hired the teachers. And, in fact, learning is something that's part of life. It's not just part of the classroom. And if it doesn't extend into life, it's not going to happen. It's funny, when we talk about this project, we've had a lot more luck talking to uh, you know, ministers of development or ministers of finance 
than we have talking to ministers of education. Ministers of education tend not to get it. Ministers of, of development tend to understand that development is a much more holistic process. So, I mean, a few things that are, are, are different in terms of our approach. Uh, there was actually, there, there's, there's a quite famous study that was done here in India about 15 years ago that probably most of you have heard about. It took place in a little village outside of Delhi. It's called the Whole Wall Project. Anybody here Whole Wall? Whole the Wall is, is actually, I guess, it's more famous outside of India than in India. Um, <laughs> But what they did was they put a computer in, well, sort of, sort of pretended to put it in a hole in a wall in a village, just left it there. But in any case, they put a computer in a village and left it there, and the kids all came and figured out how to use the computer. And the, 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 the great lesson learned was actually a lesson we already knew the answer to anyway, but um, it, was, it was a compelling narrative, so people paid attention this time, and that is that kids can learn how to use computers. We know that. Kids can learn how to use computers. So we don't need to teach kids how to learn the computer. They can learn how to use the computer. In fact, anybody can learn how to use a computer. Although kids are less inhibited, they learn faster because of that. What the, what the whole wall project did not demonstrate and cannot demonstrate is kids learning to use the computer for learning. Not learn to use a computer, but learn to use a computer for learning. And that's that's the difference. And that's what we're trying to do. The computer is, is, is the impact learning, not learning the computer. I don't care about keyboarding skills. I care about skills that are going to allow the children to use the computer for problem solving. Not problem solving of the computer, problem solving of the problems they encounter in life. Um, it's not about, again, the lecture. It's not about me, the teacher, stuffing information in your ear and then measuring how many of these objects you've managed to capture. It's rather about you and what you do with the knowledge, what you do with your learning. The teacher is not an instructor. The teacher is a mentor shaping the experience, pointing the children towards different things, encouraging different types of behavior, such as reflection, and it, it, it's holistic. It's a, it's a holistic approach. It's about learning to learn, and when you're learning to learn, you're taking risks. Most of school, here, here's, here's the, the, the thing that, again, it drives me a little crazy. You're in school, and you're taught to get the right answer. You're taught not to make mistakes. If you make a mistake, you get a bad grade, or in a bougie, you get hit by the stick. So very quickly, all the good students, all the bright minds, learn how to not make mistakes, how to avoid the stick, how to get that good, shiny grade. Well, how do you not make mistakes? The way you don't make mistakes is you don't take risks. So what we're doing is we're taking our brightest minds and teaching them how not to take risks. Because if you take a risk, you might make a mistake and you get hit. So we're taking all these bright, bright young minds and we're making them stupid. We're making them incapable of the kind of creative risk-taking you need to actually solve real problems. So the wonderful thing about the, 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 the computer, what we've tried to sort of accentuate in the, the software we've designed, is we're trying to make it be a place where risks are welcome, where you're allowed to make mistakes, where the penalty for making a mistake is zero. In fact, sometimes there's a reward for making a mistake because you discover something new. So the idea of rethinking school to be about making mistakes as opposed and taking risks, you know, I can understand in industry, don't make mistakes because mistakes cost money. But in school, that's the place where you should be making the biggest mistakes. That's the place where it should be a luxury, make mistakes. But we've got a system that is so mismatched between what needs to be done and its value system that we were, we're making the students lose, the, lose any interest in what real learning is. 
Um, it, it, it's, in some countries, it, it, it's, it, it, it's unbelievable how bad it is. A lot of, I've got a lot of friends from Japan who refuse to send their kids to school in Japan when they send their kids to take them to the States or anywhere but Japan because it's such a grind that by the time the kids get to university, you know, they're working, working, working to pass that exam to get to university. And by then, they so hate learning. They're so turned off by school that they just, that, that it's over. No, no creativity left in them whatsoever. Uh, I, I don't mean to, I, I, can, I don't need to just single out Japan. I can describe schools in just about any country, and in particular, many schools in my country that are, are, are as bad or worse. It's not about memorization. Being able to memorize, I guess, is a useful skill, although it's a lot less useful today when the information is at our fingertips. It's critical thinking. That's, that, you know, when I hire people, I'm not interested in what facts they can regurgitate back to them. I'm interested in, can they solve problems? Can they help me think through a problem? Because that's what I have to do every day. I don't, I don't care about Members, they, I don't care how fast you can do your times tables or the, you know, what, what numbers you have in your head. I care about what kinds of approaches you take to problem solving. So we, I'm not going to actually go into any of this. Um, this is sort of our, our, the principles by which we operate. We really do believe that it should be one-to-one, -one, the child should own it. You've got to start young. If the child doesn't own it, then it doesn't go home. They don't have that informal time. And they also don't take ownership. They don't take responsibility. If they own it, they're responsible. They're invested as part of that. Software Libre, free software. That's the one I want to focus on. And the reason why free software is not just because free software is free. It's got nothing to do with the price whatsoever. Because free software actually isn't free. Because all software, once you have it, you have to maintain it. So free software has a price just like any other software. The point of free software is that it's a culture. It's a culture of responsibility. Because with freedom comes responsibility. We don't have the right word in English. Maybe we have the right word in, uh, in the local dialect here. But in English, we're missing the right word. It's really. Um, it, in Spanish, it would be libre. Not, not, it's not gratis, it's libre. The culture, the responsibility that comes with free software is, is what we're after. I don't want to give kids a black box solution to a problem. I want to give them the responsibility to solve the problem. A bunch of other stuff that we have to do and it's actually, you know, a lot of these things are things that, that are, are the investment that has to happen above and beyond buying hardware. This is, again, part of the price of any, any deployment that isn't considered in these bids. And actually, you know, if I go back for a second, good news is that we've got groups here in Goa that are fast in all these areas. You have in, in, in this state, in this community, you've got these resources. And it's just a matter of rallying these resources and making them. So, learning is doing. So if you want more learning, you want more doing. So it's really all about engaging kids in, in doing. And love is a better master than duty. So I don't care what the problem is that the child is trying to solve. It just should be a problem that's authentic to them. And there are lots of problems out there. So we do a lot, actually, the kind of, of learning that we want in elementary school is a lot like the kind of learning you find in a management school. If, if you think about this, you know, I, I, you know and I, as I was walking over to the lecture hall today, I walked past the breakout rooms where you guys sit around and collaborate and work together on problems. How often did you go to breakout rooms when you were in elementary school? Not so often. 
It's those kinds of habits we want to instill right from the very beginning. That's, you know, it, 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 it's ironic that the only time that collaboration is called cheating is when you're in school. And, and so we want to break that mindset. So, again, I, I, I have to be a realist and I have to accept the fact that there are all these measurements of things that don't matter, but the kids have to pass their exams or they're not going to move on to the next level. The system is, is skewed in a particular way and I can't change that. It's going to take generations to change that. The change in school is going to happen because a generation of kids are going to come to school with such different skills that they're going to change it from the bottom up. It's never going to change because of an enlightened minister of education. Because even if he has an enlightened minister of education, he or she has such an entrenched bureaucracy that it's impossible to change. The kids will change school. A colleague of mine, Alan Kay, wants to find technology as anything invented after you were born. And to the kids, this generation, this is just stuff, it's not technology. This is just stuff, it's not technology. That's, they, they just live with it, they grew up with it. And they, they, well, they haven't grown up with it if we don't give it to them. So we've got to give them that opportunity. So we, we look at a, a very different type of evaluation. We put a real emphasis on doing, but we also put an emphasis on reflection. And uh, we, we have built into the software a tool that automatically accumulates a journal or a diary of everything a child does. And we do a lot with what's called a portfolio assessment. So the assessment is based not on what, what you do on your test, the assessment is based on what you do. It's not a measurement of what you know, it's a measurement of what you've done. And um, again, we, we, we have to deal with that other stuff as well, but this is where, where we see the real value. And the, the nice thing about this approach to assessment is it actually makes the learning visible to the learner, not just to the, to the administrator. And if you make the learning visible to the learner, then the learner can work with that and, and, and grow. And, and realize their mastery, realize their sense of purpose. Without it, you really have drudgery. So, I want to just share a little bit of data We've got um, that deployment in Uruguay, it's the oldest deployment, and we've got every child in the country of Uruguay has this system. And they've been doing it now for, for four years. And so we have some data, this was sort of some before and after data, because in, in the city, in Monte de Veo, a lot of the kids already had access to computing before we went in. And I apologize for the slides in Spanish, but it's, I, I'll, I'll translate for you that. Um, the kids that were using computers before our intervention, it's this, the darker green line, were primarily using computers for Ugar's. Ugar's play, it's games. They were playing games. They weren't doing much anything else except for playing games. Afterward, they were playing games. They were still playing games. But they were doing all this other stuff too. So they were searching for information on the internet, they were writing, they were drawing, painting, taking pictures, they were chatting, I'm going to get back to chat in a second. They were, they were downloading music and videos, they were also, also uploading music and videos, they were creating music and videos. They were uh, using electronic mail, they were writing blogs. So, it, yeah, nothing wrong with games, but they, they had a much broader perspective on how they can use this tool as a thing to think with, a thing to accomplish the goals. Now, chatting is, 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 is one of my favorite uh, controversial topics because oftentimes I encounter teachers who are very upset that we have a chat program because they don't want the kids wasting time in chat. And I have to point out to the teachers that one of our goals is that the kids learn to read and write. And what is chat but kids reading and writing? And so, you know, my son didn't learn to read and write in, in, in school. He learned to read and write chatting with his girlfriend. And, and you know, so th this idea that um, 
you know, we've we got these, these tools that motivate kids to be expressive and communicate. Let's use them. It doesn't matter what he's writing about, he's writing, he's reading. So, this is my favorite picture of kids with laptops. This is a picture of some kids, these two children are from a little town called Cocopé in uh, Paraguay. It's, a little, it's about, it's, it's uh, much more remote than, than the villages we went through on the way to, to get to the school today. Um, and the, the reason why I like these, this picture so much, the reason why it's my favorite, is you'll see that on the laptop the children have put some stickers. Now, why is that significant to me? Because children put stickers on lots of things. The reason why it's significant to me is that when, when we designed the laptop, we purposely designed the laptop to prevent the children from putting stickers on the laptop. We were so enamored with our design that we wanted to keep it pure and not have the kids decorate it. And yet the kids managed to put the stickers on anyway. The kids want to put stickers on, they have a problem. We were trying to get in their way, they did end run around us and figure out how to put the stickers on the laptop anyway. Go kids, these are problem solvers. So it's hard to take a picture of a kid with a computer that doesn't just look cute, but doesn't tell you anything about the learning. This is a picture that tells me something about the learning. They were called the salt. It's another picture also from the same village. This is in, also in Kapoke. This is not the factory. This is not kids building laptops. This is kids repairing laptops. Because believe it or not, even our laptop, every once in a while, something breaks. And when it breaks, you don't call up the local service center. You fix it yourself. We designed it so the kids could fix it themselves. We put extra screws in the handle because we figured if the kids took it apart, they might lose some screws. We, we, we quit, but I'm pretty serious about it, that the warranty is not valid until you open it. You have to take it apart in order to make the warranty valid. You have to make an effort to try to fix it yourself. And then if you can't, we'll fix it. So the, the idea that, that I mean, what happens is that in every single school, there's a group of kids that get really excited about this, really good at it. They set up shop. They charge 10 rupee to reseat a keyboard. They charge 15 rupee to change a Wi-Fi antenna. They, they become entrepreneurs. Nothing wrong with that. 